Welcome back and uh, thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Sunrise. Now let's talk about the Dangote Foundation. Mm. It is a private philanthropy um, and it belongs to Aliko Dangote. Yes. Okay. It is responsible for contributing over a hundred million dollars in charity funds to several causes in Nigeria and in Africa as a whole and that it has done in the last four years. Mm, actually we are the largest private foundation in Africa with a 1.25 billion dollar endowment which is the largest private uh, endowment of any single donor um, of African origin. Okay and some of your activities uh, include 1 billion naira for Nigerian universities, including 500 million for the development of a business school in Bayero University, as well as 100 million for the proposed Otoke University in Bayelsa State. Now, that's the much that I know. <laughs> but you are the managing director and CEO of Nangote Foundation, Zoera Yusufu, and you're going to tell us more about the Dangote Foundation and all the good things it gets up to. Because earlier in the program today, the essay to the governor of Borno State actually mentioned Dangote Foundation, and you, you are doing things in that area as well. Welcome to the program, Zuera. Thank you so much. Thank now, you. tell us briefly. Okay. About the Dangote Foundation. Okay. Um, the Dangote Foundation was actually um, set up and incorporated here in 1993. Um, it did it's start that old. off. Yes, it's that old. Um, very discreetly doing a lot of good things around Nigeria and around Africa. Um, in the past, since 2014, um, we've restructured the foundation. Energy Ali co endowed it with $1.25 billion which makes it the single largest private philanthropy in Africa. Um, we now have a board, we have this um, structured endowment, like I said, and our uh, strategic areas of focus are health, with a particular focus on nutrition, um, education, education, obviously, exactly, <laughs> economic empowerment of women, and also disaster relief. Um, in the context of disaster and humanitarian relief is where all of our work in uh, the Northeast has been happening. So we've been um, contributing a lot of money to feeding uh, people in the IDP camps in both Borno, Adamawa, and Yobe. Uh, we have also pledged 2 billion naira to help the reconstruction mm -hmm. of uh, a lot of the destroyed schools and hospitals in Borno. As you know, the insurgency has left in their path just a lot of destruction. So mm -hmm. we were helping um, the state to rebuild. Uh, in addition to to the the, the more uh, well known programs, um, which is our partnership, for instance, with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation around um, eradicating polio and improving routine immunization for children, we also run um, what we call a micro grant program. This is our biggest empowerment program. Mm -hmm. The goal there is to reach the thousand poorest women in all hundred, all 774 LGAs in Nigeria. Yeah. We started um, a couple of years back with six states in northern Nigeria. We're right now running the program here in Lagos. Because okay. Lagos is big and we live here and it's more densely populated, we're looking at the 2,000 uh, poorest women in all 20 LGAs, which is 20, uh, 40,000 women who each get a cash grant and a phone to help them um, establish, develop, do some kind mm -hmm. of business. Mm -hmm. It's a grant because it's, they don't have to mm -hmm. pay it back. It's not directed, so there's no capacity building component where we tell them what to do with the money. Okay. It's really a gesture to help them. Um, most of them put that money to good use. So all the m and &E that we've been doing and tracking what they do with the money mm -hmm. has shown us that women know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> if they get them, a chance. If they get a chance. <laughs> yes. And if so I a lot of correctly, the last time you were here, you were talking about polio. Yes, with uh, mm. Dr. Mandara from the Gates Foundation. How yes. is that going? So we had made a lot of progress across the, the country. Um, we had some, Nigeria was the last uh, polio endemic country in Africa, so we were really trying to get rid Can of it. Can you still call it endemic? Well, it's, I mean, it's, it, we still had it. It's no other country 
on the continent still has polio, and we do. Okay. So we had made a lot of uh, progress, had gotten into the regions, spent a lot of money immunizing kids and doing what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, in Borno, um, a couple of months back, some polio cases have resurfaced, um, obviously from the non uh, let me call them the difficult to reach areas during the insurgency. Mm -hmm. So of course if some area is uh, controlled by the insurgents it's very difficult to have regular immunization campaigns indeed, there. Indeed. So the cases, the two cases that have popped up first came from those newly liberated areas. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's mm -hmm. not a surprise, it's a huge disappointment of course because we were really you know, starting to celebrate almost two years without polio. We had just a few more months to go before we would and then be, this popped and then this popped up. But then this is the reality, right? This is what we have to deal with. If we haven't been able to immunize people in those areas, we shouldn't be shocked that the children um, are still getting it. So we're now in the emergency response. We're actually starting a, an outbreak vaccination campaign today, October okay. 8th, in now Borno, uh, working with all the different partners from the Gates Foundation to UNICEF to WHO, uh, the Rotary Club, all the people involved with the polio involved. fight are all right. So okay. really the goal is been pushed back a couple of years now. But okay. okay. Now tell me, how is the Dangote Foundation related to the Dangote group of companies? So we because we all in a way belong to Anaji Dangote. 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 He's yeah. the chairman of the foundation. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's his private philanthropy. The billion dollars that we have is his own personal money. The way we work with the rest of the group is the business units are responsible for their own CSR. Okay. So for instance, cement is supposed to do corporate social responsibility projects that are connected to the catchment areas of cement. Okay. Um, the sugar is okay. supposed to do CSR in areas related to the, to the sugar business. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing, I mean, I, like I told you, we're looking at health and malnutrition, for instance, yeah. and launching a big malnutrition program across the country. That's not a CSR project that would spe 